good friends, the Roos, have come, and we are giving them the first shot at coming one-on-one -on -one to chat with Grandpa. So we are going to invite everybody to take the opportunity to do that. As you know, we just kind of close. When you see it's open, you just come and talk to them. If there's anybody listening, I would like to say a few words. This is kind of a surprise, probably, because I don't speak very often. <laughs> Nobody in this world can be more happier than I am right now. I've got my prodigy in this room, and it's filled with friends, and you guys made all this sacrifice for an old guy like me, and I really do love it. Thank you for those people that came from the East Coast. Thank you for the people that came from, uh, from, from Del Phelps is here, he's from Seattle. Thank you for people that are neighbors. Thank you for all you people that came to honor me. It has been wonderful, wonderful week. I did not know that Carol and I had such an influence on so many people. But it started with a group in front of my house, and Jeff says it may have been as many as 150 people. And then, of course, the Coast Guard Air Station honored me by sending some petty officers, three wonderful guys, just the type of guys that used to work with Grandpa in the Coast Guard and made him famous and Carol famous. Great grandkids, I want you to know, kids, you will have a wonderful life. That loving people, have your own family, love them, love the people, be aggressive, do the job well, and then just enjoy people and life. That's what Carol and I have done for years, and it's, it brought me to this spot where I sit today, where I got all you wonderful people making me feel like I'm the top guy in the world, and I'm just a simple guy from Iowa. <laughs> but I did have a perfect wife, as you all know. Carol was absolutely superb as a wife and mate. She made me successful. She made my life absolutely, unbelievably delightful. And the one interesting thing is she's not gone. She's still with me to this very moment. She's probably telling me exactly what to say. Um, the story I want to share is before we came on this trip, I told some of my coworkers that I'm going to see my wife's grandfather who turned 100 years old. And they were amazed by it. We were telling them the whole day we showing up, how he walks and, and all these things. And they asked him, that's really amazing. And I shared the YouTube channel of less high and his short little stories that he has and then the next day in our in a morning meeting the inspirational thought the inspirational movie was this one minute and 30 second video on less talking about leadership and so it's really neat to just see that it's spreading out i mean it's amazing you have lived an amazing life um, you're touching people that you probably will never see, never know, and you'll continue to touch them for forever. And that's really cool. So, happy birthday. I'm Bill J. Phillips, a member of the class of 1965 at the Coast Guard Academy. And I have my classmate, Dick Rue, here with me. And you could say, well, we're working on family. But I don't think that's true. <laughs> because our first year there, we needed a class advisor, and somebody recommended. And we select Captain High at the time, Lieutenant Commander High on the staff. So the best class advisor we ever had was that person who recommended you, Les. Thank you. Very much. <laughs> uh, the joke is he's the second best. <laughs> okay. <laughs> to give you uh, an idea of what he thinks about our class, at 50 years after graduation, a committee was formed to prepare a book in which all classmates could put two pages of what they did from graduation in 1965 until 50 years later. 
I was on that committee, and uh, I knew Mike was a publisher, so I, I ended up put the book together as, as everybody submitted photographs and letters and pictures and whatever they wanted on their two pages. Les High was reserved and he had four pages because he needed it. As the book was being published and put together, I was talking to Les about this booklet and describing what was on the cover, what was on the back, the inside of the back cover, all the features of the book. And I said, Les, even on the spine here, we've got it. Coast Guard Academy, Golden Journeys. It's right here, so you can see it whenever it's on the bookshelf. So Les turned to me and he said, Bill, this book isn't going to be on the bookshelf. It's going to be right here next to That's the way he thinks of us. And we think of the same thing for you too, Les. Hey, thank you very much, Dell. It's wonderful. Thank you. I'm Barry Webster. I'm married to uh, Emily Bostwick. Um, so I work for the VA, and Les has been my favorite secret shopper for years. He lets me know about all the things that we're doing well, and then he very patiently tells me some of the things we can improve, of course. And I don't know all the 65ers, but I feel like I do, because um, your book, their book, is part of my curriculum every year for all of my trainees. And so I have trained eight people to be business managers at medical centers all over the country, and part of our reading curriculum is your book. Um, so there's been directors and all kinds of future leaders, as you probably intended, that are learning lessons from each of you. And of course, I've had the opportunity of learning the most from, from less directors. So I appreciate all of you, and happy birthday, sir. Mike. And I think the book you're referring to is The Gift of Leadership, right? It's right. Yeah. Um, yes, and that actually has been um, used by many of us. I used it in trainings. Melissa's waving her head that yes, she has used it in trainings. So um, I think the other day I said you had had influence on hundreds, Dad, and then maybe thousands. In my notes to you, I think it is very definitely thousands that your life has impacted. Hi, I'm Lindsay Shea. I'm married to Ken, the new guy, um, which is. Mary and Jeff's son, and I love Grandpa High very much, and um, I have a Carol story, which I know are welcome. So I figured, <laughs> I was a little nervous, but I thought, I like it, I'll catch up. Um, when I first met Grandpa, I came with Ken, my husband, I was beer dating at the time, and he had told me so much about Grandma and Grandpa High, um, and I don't, I don't, didn't know when I went to visit them that Grandma High at the time had Alzheimer's. When we sat down with him, he told me all about the 65ers. He showed me a book. And he went to um, go prepare some food, and Ken went to help him. And I thought, OK, this is my chance to talk to Grandma. So they have that cool painting above their fireplace. And I knew they had a son that was an artist, Greg. And I said, is that, um, did your son paint that? And she said, she looked at it, and she said, I think so. And I said, yeah, I heard you have a son that's an artist. And she said, yeah, I think that's right. And then um, their book was on the table, and their picture was on the back. And so I showed it to her, and I said, is this you? And she said, I think that is me. And I started to catch on that maybe, you know, her memory wasn't always all there for her. And she was so, she's a little confused, very sweet. And um, Grandpa High came back in, and he had made us some corn casserole, um, which he had learned from Carol. And he had them in what he told me were Carol bites, because this like cube of the casserole was the perfect um, portion for her, he had learned. And he told me how he made them, he keeps them in the freezer, and then he microwaves them, and it's so convenient. And he was so, um, he took so much pride and how he took care of her, made her the things that she loves, that it was so clear that she had made for him for so long. And um, Grandma, we were talking more, and Grandma looked down at her feet, and she was kind of shaking the feet, just a little bit. And um, Grandma picked up on that really quick, and he went over, and he, um, he just stopped his conversation with us, and he kneeled on the ground in front of her, which was not easy for him. And he said, 
Yeah, honey, do you want your shoes on? And she said, I, I think so. Um, he knew just from the way she was kind of looking at her feet. He picked up on that. And so he starts putting her shoes on, and he's just explaining to her, these are your new shoes. You might not recognize these. We just got them for you. They're so nice. He's talking to her about what color they are. And he's putting on her shoes so gently. And he was so caring to her and really speaking to her in exactly the way that she needed. You could tell. Um, and it was very clear that she was just the most special person in the room and to him and in his life. And the way watching him care for her like that, having just sort of put together what her struggles were, was so special. And I loved the way that he spoke to her and the time that he took with her, and how most of our conversation really revolved in some way around Carol. And that's the same to this day. Their is always telling me about Carol and um, pictures of her and what she's saying to him and how she's still with him on her walks. And um, I feel very lucky to be married to someone who came from Grandma High and who was able to witness uh, the love and care that he shows for his wife.